we have Taylor here today, um, and we're just going to test her on her attachment style. And before we get into it, the attachment style... Let me see, y'all. I'm trying to be chill. I'm trying not to be so formal. Formal. But I read this book recently, or I'm reading this book, and it's called Attached, right? And it says the new science of adult attachment and how it can help you find and keep love. It's written by Amir Levine, MD, and Rachel S.F. Heller, who has their MA. And this book really just gave me the insight on how I approach certain relationships and why I actually was on to something this video that's still up on my channel I did a video where I was trying to see what my triggers were it turns out one of the people that I was talking to at that time was triggering me to react in an anxious attachment style and I kept telling myself if I was secure I wouldn't feel like this and then literally I read this book and it answered it answered so many of my questions so I'm not telling Taylor the the attachment styles yet because I wanted to, you know, have like a, I don't know, an unbiased um, testing, but I'm going to tell you this originated with the Mary Ainsworth attachment style test with children. And so basically, depending on how the child responds to their mom leaving the room and coming back, the, it tells what their attachment style is, but we're going to get into that after y'all me and Taylor have been sitting here for like days trying to finish this. So we're going to start. All right, Taylor, question number one, and I got a piece of paper too to ask you. Okay. <laughs> if you, okay. If it's untrue, say untrue. And if it's true, I'm going to write true. All right. Okay. So, on, let me write your name, Taylor. Anyways, all right, Taylor, um, just say true or untrue. I often worry that my partner will stop loving me. Is this true or untrue? Okay. True. It's true? Okay, okay. So, got you. I find it easy to be affectionate with my partner. Okay, okay. I fear that once someone gets to know the real me, he or she won't like who I am. Untrue. Okay. I find that I bounce back quickly after a breakup. It's weird how I can just put someone out of my mind. I don't know. <laughs> Why he word it like that? <laughs> I, mean, I want to say untrue. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right, so is this true or untrue? You want to? Is that the truth, or is it? <laughs> I don't know. What do you say? I don't know. That's why I was smiling. I, I'm wondering what you were gonna say. <laughs> okay, okay. I don't know. I don't know. Why is this a true or false? It can be both, can't it? Mm, they, depending on the person. I think so. Depending on the person. So for this, I'm gonna say it's true. I'm gonna say you bounce back pretty quickly, but not in an unhealthy way. It just depends on whether or not you like them, right? Yeah. Okay. 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 That is a true statement. When I'm not involved in a relationship, I feel somewhat anxious and complete. I thought about somebody, but not... You said when I'm not involved? Yeah. When in I... Relationship, can you repeat that? Yeah, I'm sorry. I talk kind of fast. When I'm not involved in a relationship, I feel somewhat anxious and incomplete. Is this true or untrue? It's untrue. Okay, next one. I find it... <laughs> what, what is it for you, Sydney? For me... I don't, <laughs> I don't feel I, when I'm single I don't feel incomplete I think I can feel income I can feel more incomplete with a person versus by myself you know what I'm saying I agree I agree with that totally like I feel like most of the time when I am with someone like I I'm probably at my happiest when you said that I'm not worrying about anything when you said that earlier, I wanted, I think that's the scary thing that I, I don't want, like, I'm kind of scared to admit that, to be honest with you. Um, you said that earlier, like you said, I, I feel happier by myself and I know I do, but I'm too scared to admit it because then I realize I won't need a romantic connection. And for some reason, that's the part that's scary to me. When, why, how can, how do you, how do you say that so confidently? I guess I'm asking. Okay, 
Okay, repeat that. Oh, okay. This is just my question to you. This isn't on here. I was saying how... See, how do I shape this question? When did you realize at a point that it wasn't people that make you happy, it's you that makes you happy? Um, I feel like you get into this cycle. It's not like a point in time you realize it. It's kind of like an emotion that you realize that you keep having again. Mm -hmm. Like you associate an emotion with something all the time. Like if you don't, I don't know, like people associate things with other things all the time. So I associate an emotion Mm -hmm. that I have with being in a relationship in an unhealthy relationship hmm. and so I feel like I realized that I'm happier alone when I kept having that emotion so I kind of was like well Taylor like you have one or two options you can keep doing what you're doing or you can work on yourself so I just decided to work on myself <sighs> I think when I realized, I, I answered the question. I don't know. No, you did. You did. I'm. I'm admiring. Like, I hope I get to the point to where, I mean, I know I am not. I don't want to say I know I'm better off alone, but I do realize that like I am happier with myself. Like when I am single, I just feel like when I do, when I realize that to the when I start acting on it and just realize like I don't need like a, a boyfriend or someone to talk to or like even to entertain. I think when I realized that it makes sense because you are really far ahead in school and stuff. So I think if I adopt that, who knows like how high or like what I can achieve in that time. All right, we're back. Are we back on? Yeah, we're back on. Okay, Taylor. So the last thing I asked you was, oh my gosh, where's your, there it is. All right, the next thing, you say true or untrue. I find it difficult to emotionally support my partner when he or she is feeling down. Um, untrue. Untrue. Am I supposed to write that? Okay, okay, if it's untrue, don't mark anything. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, when my partner is away, I'm afraid she or he might be interested in someone else. Away in which way, like... Like, you know, just... Like, physically away? Yeah, physically away. Okay, read the question again. I'm sorry. You're good. When my partner is away, I'm afraid he or she might be interested in someone else. Untrue. Okay, so I don't need to mark anything. I feel comfortable depending on my romantic partners. Untrue. Hmm. Why is that? I just... Why would I need to depend on them? I'm my own person. I feel like anything that I ask of them, I should be able to do myself. But at the same time, they, I shouldn't have to ask them something that, you know, is basically bare minimum. Hmm. So I feel like if I had to ask you for the bare minimum, I feel like you're not dependent. Like, I just feel like I've lost my faith in you already. Hmm. Like, I, I know people can't read minds, but the certain stuff people should know that I feel like you, I feel like you can tell you can tell a dependable person from uh, the get go like from the beginning yeah and mm-hmm. so I feel like if they just don't it depends on the person first but if they just don't give me like I've never found someone that I'm going to be dependent on as of yet oh. I feel like I'm just not at that stage one and I don't know, I feel like I'm a pretty independent person as well. So you really I feel are, like yeah. if I'm going to be dependent on you, I feel like that is a, a vulnerable thing to do as well. That sums it up. Yeah, no. That was, I don't know. I can't say it's good, like right or wrong or anything, because I don't know myself, but I enjoy hearing your view on that. That is great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, okay, we'll go on, we'll go on. <clears throat> I don't know if I'm doing this right, but my, in- okay, here it is. This, you kind of already answered this already. This, is this true or untrue? My independence is more important to me than my relationships. Um, I feel, I feel like I haven't got to that stage in life yet, but I'm going to say that Like, I don't, I don't know. I just, uh, I feel like, you know how you, you get married and people be 
like you become one person. Mm-hmm. Like I don't want to become one person. I still want to be myself. I want to be two people just in a relationship. Hmm. So I feel like I need some like separate. Now what? Body. What scares you about that whole becoming one thing? I mean, that happens, like, they... That happens every time you, like, have, like, sex with someone, but, you know, marriage is... That's just another, like, you know, add-on. So tell me what the whole one thing... I guess your opinion on it. I just feel like... I don't... Even when you have sex, I feel like when you become one, it's like... I don't know. I feel like people relate sex with love and it's like they're different. So I feel like if you're becoming one, it's like you in a loving way, like you become one as in like you're gonna be with this person for however long you're gonna be with that person. But on the other hand, like it doesn't scare me to be with someone, but I want to have my independence thing and they have their separate thing. Like I don't want to be, I guess, like, it's okay to be, I don't want to be grouped with them if they do something. Like, I want to be my own independent person, and they are their own independent person. Mm-hmm. But we're still a couple. Like, if they do something wrong, or if I do something wrong, I don't want them to be associated with my wrong. Even that's how marriage works, I like that and stuff. I don't, I you, you have a good point in that. Like, have you noticed, like, they drag, like, the whole the Clintons, you know what I'm saying? Instead yeah, of just they, like... they drag her, but they don't drag him, but sometimes they do, but I just don't want to do that. Like, I still want to have my separate life, but I want to have a life with them, but I just want to have a separate life from them. Mm-hmm. But I want to have a life with them. So, that's like... It's nothing that scares me about it. It just turns me off, kind of, because I'm just like, I don't really want to be one with you. Like, you mm-hmm. are the one right now, but... We'll see how long it goes, you know? <laughs> Somebody's feelings gonna be hurt. I'm kidding, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding, girl. Right I'm now, just because, like, I'm not... I'm not with anyone, and I don't like anyone. Like, I'm probably a totally different person when I meet someone, but I'm just saying, like, that's how I'm thinking now. Like, you just have to see how long it goes. Like, some, when you meet the person you're gonna meet, like, you know, it's gonna be forever, but mm-hmm. right now, you don't know it's gonna be forever, so I'm just mm-hmm. gonna say, see how long it goes. You know, like with kombucha, you I know you remember like I would call you um, and I'd be like, I felt like I was losing myself. You know what I'm saying? You remember yeah. when I would call you until I'd be like, I feel like I don't I had lost pieces of myself within the relationship. So I, I completely what you're saying. I love how at first I was like, I was like, oh, my gosh, Taylor, like, what are you doing? And then literally the same thing happened to me. And I, I don't know, I guess I should that's something that you like taught me that sometimes it's not always the best thing when you are and that's just like when one person gets in trouble in the class and the whole class gets silent lunch like no it was you know who it was talking but okay okay I got you I got you yeah like I understand what you're saying like that that was my point like I feel like a lot of relationships kind of tank because like the person you got into a relationship with is not there because y'all are one person and to create one person you lose things and you Um, gain things sometimes you don't want to gain and you lose things sometimes you don't want to lose and so like you're not looking at the same person both of y'all are looking at different people because y'all are morphed into one person exactly looking at is not the person you want to be with so that's my thing I'm sorry. My head's just exploding, you know. Not real. Let me not say that. I can't talk. <laughs> I'm just like, wow. Like, damn. Okay, okay, okay. I, we have we got more questions. We only on ten, and we got forty. Okay. So, all right. Okay, I, come on now. I, <laughs> I prefer not to share my innermost feelings with my partner. Is this true or untrue? That's true. Okay. Okay. When I show my partner how I feel, I'm afraid he or she will not feel the same way about me. True or untrue? That is true. Okay, okay. And, okay, next one. I am generally satisfied with my romantic relationships. I know that's untrue. That's for me, too. That's untrue for me as well. That was very quick. Check, check, check. (laughs) All right, let me, wait. Okay, okay. Uh... 
see that's confusing next one i don't here it is i don't feel the need to act out much in my ro romantic relationships i'm smiling because i will act out like the city girl i will act up like crazy if i don't you know okay but go ahead this is is this true or, hmm? oh, the question to me. oh um they said i don't feel the need to act out much in my romantic relationships what do they mean by act so for me personally if i have communicated multiple times okay with with black bear since we're i'm gonna try to throw the references in there um and just to fill in the people that are watching me and taylor to protect the identities of the people that we have dealt with they know who they are but just for legal reasons we have nicknames for every each and one of you you're welcome anyway so for example with black bear i've asked multiple times for reassurance and stuff and some people will say like oh you don't need it you know and I, I agree with you i feel like with the right person you probably won't need as much but i feel like some people um to refer back to this question that i'm asking you i would act out in a sense of i don't know it's like a it's not like a temper tantrum because i'm not a, a kid it's not like i'm like wow let me just throw my stuff let me pick your stuff up and throw it it's more like what i do is uh, if you don't do this for me or like i've asked you multiple times like can you satisfy the needs that i'm asking you for now i'm gonna hit you with this ultimatum like either we're not doing this anymore or i get what i you know like what i'm asking for i think that's what they meant by act out have you ever had to do that um usually like if i tell them like this is what i want this is what i need mm -hmm. and they don't do it or they say okay i'm gonna do it and they don't do it then i'm just like okay usually i i will tell them again but it will be more in a i don't know it'll be like basically you're not doing what i asked of you and it's very bare minimum type of stuff mm -hmm. so It'll be more, I'll just like get what I need off my chest, but usually it's through text, anyways. Um, or sometimes it's in person, like, yeah, but if they don't do it, I'm just like, yeah. Usually I'm just like, okay, I'm done. Hmm. Because, like, what I ask is not something I couldn't do for myself, or it's not extreme. So I feel like I don't really act out, it's just kind of like, what I ask of you is not extreme to ask, mm -hmm. so I expect it to be done if possible, or if you can't do it, you better have a good excuse. <laughs> period okay i got <laughs> i got my answer um i got my answer to that so you're good you're good um here we go the next one is i think about re i think about my relationships a lot not relationships in general like your relationships do you think about them a lot i'm true yeah i was gonna say um you seem pretty from what sometimes with some of these i think i know the answer with the last two you said what i thought um okay so untrue so that means i don't mark it okay next one i find it difficult to depend on romantic partners i feel like you answered that earlier when you said that i'm gonna just let you answer it go ahead Now, you're, the questions are a little, the way they're worded, girl, if you took, there's another set after this that I didn't write down. It asked how to find out, it asked you how to find out your, your person's attachment style. That is three sets of 11 questions. So, what? yeah anyway <laughs> i tend to get very quickly attached to a romantic partner is this true or untrue i feel like that's true really that's not what you really know you seem pretty detached whenever you tell me i feel like for me it's attached like if i like someone that's attached fair enough i don't know like i feel like i i mean what's the definition of like attachment like, no quickly like they're not saying whether you get attached like do you get quickly attach um what is quickly i don't that's what i was saying too i'm like uh, <laughs> i know for me 
I feel like we all personally don't get quickly attached. It's just, it's after a while when you realize, oh, you really like that person, and then they hit you with the, oh, I'm trying not to cut, then they hit you with the bull crap that I was hit with. You know what I'm saying? With Pakistani dude. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like, with Santa. Uh, go ahead. Um, well, it could be untrue, depending on the time that it's quickly. Okay. I don't know. I also feel like it depends on the person, but I feel like maybe since you, I don't know, you hear me talk about people a lot, so maybe it's untrue. Because I do take a while to adjust to the person. Mm-hmm. You be like, girl, I don't even if I like this dude. You say. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, I feel like when I do like them, I like them. But that's not the question. So untrue. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, the next one is, how about I ask it like this? Do you have difficulty expressing your wants and needs to your partners? That is true. I do. Okay. So this, that, I'll, okay. I was going to take the, take the, what's it called? Take the hints from you. Oh, well, you know, <laughs> well, for y'all, if y'all wonder what she's speaking of last night, me and Taylor were on the phone and I was just basically telling her um, about how I'm very straightforward with um, who I talk. Now, when people say straightforward, they think immediately like different things. But I'm talking about when it comes to what I need and want from a relationship and I'm pretty like bold in that manner, but let me, we gonna, I dropped my pen. Okay. Anyways, we gonna keep going. Do you sometimes feel angry or annoyed with your partner without knowing why? <laughs> I haven't got that far, so no. Mm, okay, okay, okay. No, untrue. Let me mark this. Are you very sensitive to your partner's moods? No. Up here. Untrue. Okay, okay. So I don't have to mark that. And do you believe that most people are honest and dependable? I believe most people are honest, but not dependable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So, um, so I'm going to say, no, I don't believe most people are honest or dependable. Um... Next one, true or untrue. I'm comfortable sharing my personal thoughts and feelings with my partner. That is untrue. Okay. I worry if my partner leaves me. I already, you already told me this, but I worry if my partner leaves me, I might not never find someone else. I know you don't think like that, but I'm going to ask you anyways. <laughs> That is untrue. Yeah, I was You're gonna correct. <laughs> I was gonna say like Taylor's gonna be like ew, but you know, like in the beginning, like you know, you always have those reactions like oh my gosh, you know he's the best person for me. But when you come to your senses, usually it's like no, like you didn't even like him in the beginning. Like maybe that was the best choice yeah. that you made, and you didn't look at the red flags. So most of the time, I come to my senses. And I'm just like you wouldn't have been happy with him if it would have gone on forever. So, Taylor, you just reminded me last night when I you said something about the red flag. I was telling Soul Plane last night. This is something else I forgot to tell you. I said, you can't keep blaming everybody for hurting you. I said, just because you didn't see the red flags in the beginning. I said, they were there. I said, trust me there. You don't. I said, even now with not being with kombucha, I told him, I said, I cannot think of the bad things that he did to me I said because I don't know why there's some science behind it of why I can't remember the reasons why I left and I thought of like another friend when she broke up with her boyfriend it made sense then she missed him got back together with him and then realized why she left in the first place and the cycle continues like oh I don't like this you know oh go ahead I thought you were going to say something no, I was just agreeing. Uh, okay. Um, it makes me nervous when my partners get too close. When my partners? Mm-hmm. I guess that's untrue. Okay, untrue. During a conflict, I tend to impulsively do or say things I later regret rather than be able to reason. Is this true or untrue? 
<laughs> Taylor said, I meant what I said. I said what I mean. <laughs> um, because yeah, usually when I'm, I, I'm very, I guess, I know what I'm about to say when I'm saying it, and I'm very, like, should I say this thing? And usually, if I'm, if I'm questioning it, I don't say it. But if it needs to be said, it needs to be said. <laughs> Y'all heard her tone, y'all heard. Ah! Okay, okay, okay. Um, <laughs> an argument doesn't usually cause me to question our entire relationship. I'm guilty of doing that, but I feel like that's not something that you do. Like, no, that's probably something I do. Wait, for real? Wait, I'm gonna say it again. An argument... Okay, does an argument make you question the entire relationship? Yeah. It does? I didn't yeah. know that. <laughs> Okay, I, I didn't know that. Obviously, you're having a disagreement about something you shouldn't. Well, something you think you shouldn't be having a disagreement about. Okay, also, you gotta talk a little bit louder into the phone, just a little bit. I am sorry. You're good. Um, Ariana doesn't usually have calls me question an entire relationship. Okay. Next, the next one is my partners often want me to be more intimate than I feel comfortable with being. Is this true or untrue? Um, it's untrue. Okay, okay. I worry that <laughs> this is just a sentence. I worry that I am not attractive enough. That is untrue. Period. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me, um, Next one. Okay, 29. Sometimes people see me as boring because I create little drama in relationships. See you as boring? Because you create drama? Yeah, that sentence was like, it was a little confusing. Apparently, some people, like, are told that, you know, they're boring because they're not crazy or whatever. So you're saying because you feel... Like, the person feels like they're boring because they don't create drama. They're saying, like, ha okay, I'll just ask, has anyone ever told you that they think that it's, the relationship is boring? No. Okay, then so you're good. Sometimes people say, so this is untrue then. We're almost done, Taylor. Okay, here we go. Uh, true or untrue, I miss my partner when we're apart, but then when we're together, I feel like I need to escape. That's untrue. Okay. When I disagree with someone, I feel comfortable expressing my opinions. Depends on the situation, but true. Yeah, yeah, same, same. All right, put B. All right. Do you hate the feeling that other people depend on you? Um, no, untrue. Yeah, I was like, that's a very strong statement. But I guess they're really trying to, like, categorize. We're almost done. If I notice that someone I'm interested in is checking out someone else, I might feel a pang of jealousy, but I don't let it phase me. It's fleeting. Is this true or untrue? I don't feel... Read that again. Okay, okay. Let's say there's someone that you're interested in, and you see... I guess they're talking about, let's say, first date type deal. You're on a date, and you notice that he's checking someone out. You get a little bit jealous, but you're like, eh, it is what it is. Like, whatever. First of all, that's a red flag. It I is. Would get jealous. <laughs> I would get gone. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no reason you do that on the first date. Exactly. But I don't know. I feel like if I really like them, it would be a hint of jealousy. But at the same time, it's just like, okay, uh, you know, people look. But at the same time, it's like, why are you looking? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's just kind of like, what? I don't know. It depends on the situation, but I, I'm going to say I'm going to be jealous. All right. <laughs> I was going to say, I got my, <laughs> I got the answer. <laughs> okay, here's the next one. The last couple questions sound like the same thing. They're just trying to get your opinion on how you would respond to it. So this is, if I notice that someone I'm interested in is checking someone out, I feel relieved. It means that they aren't ready to go serious. Like, some people think like that. They're like, oh, great. That's true. That is untrue. I know. Like, can you believe, like, there are people out there who's like, oh, I'm excited because they like someone else. So that takes the pressure off of me. Like, imagine thinking like that. Okay. Um, if you do think like that, though, 
I don't want to say sound off in the comments, but okay. <laughs> but all right. If I okay, next one. If I notice that someone I'm interested in is checking someone else out, I feel depressed. Word, That's what so I thought too. Untrue. Yeah, I was like, it's kind of strong. Okay. Um, untrue. So, if someone I'm dating is acting cold and distant, I may wonder what's wrong, but I know it's not about me. Is that how you usually feel? Mm, it depends, but I feel like no. Usually, I'm like, I feel like if you're acting weird around me, usually it's because of me. That's what you always. I feel like. I'm just not, I'm the type of person like if even if something's going on with me like I'm not going to project it onto the world. Mm -hmm. So like I feel like usually that's how I feel like people like if I have a problem with someone they're gonna know I have a problem with them the way by the way I act or what I say. Mm -hmm. But so I expect the same from other people I guess like that's just my own downfall so usually if someone's being cold or distant I think it's because of me me too me too and usually like for me from my experiences usually it is actually no that's wrong I always think it's me but then they'll be like oh my I don't want to put nobody like uh, Black Bear his situation I thought he wasn't like into me anymore but it just turned out he had like a bunch of deaths in his family I still felt like that could have been communicated better, but you know, I guess we all grieve differently. Okay, here we go. Um, so for that, you said true. So that's B. All right. If someone I'm dating is acting cold and distant, I'll probably be relieved and indifferent. It goes back to those people who get excited when someone they're talking to is talking to someone else and they're like, oh great, it takes the pressure off. Like, yeah, no. Okay. <laughs> All right. We are almost done. If someone I'm dating is acting cold and distant, I'll worry I've done something wrong. You said that earlier. Yeah. Okay. And I don't know why I slammed my fist down so hard, but <laughs> if my partner were to break up with me, I this is what I was joking about with you earlier. Like, if my partner were to break up with me, I'd try my best to show him or her what he's missing. A little jealousy wouldn't hurt. <laughs> Um, no, I do okay. not do that. I just go about my day. Well, dang. Um, <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> For me, if y'all can't tell, I might have a different approach, but <laughs> we learn it from each other. We're learning. So the next one is, if someone I've been dating for several months tells me he wants to stop seeing me, I may feel hurt at first, but I'll get over it. Is yeah. that? Okay, yeah, that's true. Sometimes if I get what I want in a relationship, I'm not sure if it's what I want. Um, yeah, okay. I, I guess. Like, it depends on the person. Like, usually I'm with someone that I... No. No? Okay. I don't know. It depends. But I'm just going to say, yeah. Usually I like the person I'm in a relationship with until I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you. Um, okay. Sometimes. Wait, what? Oh, I just read that. Last question is, I won't have much of a problem keeping contact with my ex. After all, we do have a lot in common and it can be completely platonic. I guess this, go, this is basically saying, can you be cool with an ex? Basically. Yeah, I can be cool with an ex, of course. Okay, let me see. And then that would be true so all right taylor i'm gonna calculate your score and here we go all right taylor so after <laughs> let me see oh wow go taylor okay 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 all right so after a, after assessing taylor's um information if she had more A's, she would be anxious. If she has more B's, she would be secure. And if she had more C's, she would be avoidant. Taylor, I'm going to read the three to you, and you tell me which one you are or what you think you are, and I'll tell you what. Okay, wait, say that again. Okay, I'm about to. Okay, okay. Okay, there's three of them. Secure, anxious, and avoidant. Secure attachment styles is when people are reliable and consistent. They make decisions with you. They're, they have a flexible view of relationships. They communicate relationships well. They can reach compromise during arguments. They're not afraid of commitment 
or dependency. They they don't view relationships as hard work. Closeness creates closeness, and they naturally express feelings for you. Avoidant people send mixed signals. They value their independence. They devalue you. They use distancing strategies, emotional or physical. They emphasize boundaries. They are mistrustful. They have a rigid view of relationships and uncompromising rules. And during disagreements, they need to get their way or they explode. Anxious is they want a lot of closeness. They express insecurities. They are unhappy when they're not in a relationship. They play games to keep your attention and interest. This hits different, doesn't it, for me? And they have difficulty. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they act out instead of trying to resolve the problem. They have a hard time not making things about themselves or the relationship. They let you set the tone of the relationship to not get hurt or they're preoccupied with the relationship and they fear small acts might ruin the relationship. Out of the three that I read, I know that was a lot. Uh, do you think you're lot. you can be like you can be also in multiple sections. Which ones do you f agree with? I'm just gonna say secure because I don't really play games that much. Yeah, like. And I'm not that. I don't know. I'm not a distant and avoidant person. I don't think. I don't know. I don't. Well, you're from this. Now let's go ahead and get close to the phone. Get close to him, Taylor. <laughs> so after reviewing your scores, you score four in anxious. Okay. Six in secure. Okay. And one, two, three, four. And five in avoidant. So I would say you're secure since you have the most insecure. You the most in space the section secure. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> but I was like, I said that kind of slurred it together. Now <clears throat> Depend. What I was discussing with Taylor, depending on the person that I'm with, I am pretty secure. But if I get with an avoidant person, I revert back to anxious ways. And I think this is good. I I'm really proud. Like, I'm, wow. For some reason, I don't know why I thought you were going to be avoidant, but you don't play games. So, like, why would you be avoidant or anxious? And you express it. You were you were speaking of something earlier about tell me we we had a conversation earlier Taylor tell me about um blonde not blonde tell me about what BD said to you about like if you would have asked then I would have oh mm. okay so <laughs> <laughs> that was so weird how was brought up but anyways I was telling Sydney about this person I used to um talk to. And so I was telling her how he told me, basically, if I would have asked him to be my boyfriend or, like, if I would have said something along the lines of, like, I want a relationship or whatever, then he would have been my boyfriend. Like, he would have asked me to be his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, I didn't know that. And that's pretty much it. Like, that was kind of, like, when I realized, like, I felt like I need to basically ask for what I wanted, even though I didn't want it. I feel like at that time, maybe, I don't remember, but, like, that just gave me, like, I guess, you could, wouldn't say reassurance, but, mm -hmm. like, the information that I needed for, like, right now. Like, if I were to get and, like, like someone, I would ask them or tell them what I want and, like, however they respond is however I move next. Mm. Okay. <laughs> no, I was I was just like uh, thinking of what you were saying. Um, I was referring earlier about the the reason we're going to talk about how Taylor became a secure attachment style because actually Taylor, if you didn't know, yours is the rarest. Like you you seldom meet secure like people, you know. Um, there are more categories and stuff like like I mean yeah you could say since uh, whatever but basically I'm gonna read more into the secure attachment so there was an experiment we talked about the strange situation with Mary Ainsworth and so with the secure group when they they said they describe a secure attach attachment as the capacity to connect well and securely in relationships, while others also have the capacity for autonomous action as situationally appropriate. Secure attachment is characterized by trust and 
an adaptive response to being abandoned and the belief is that one is worthy of love. In group B with the children, they are actively seeking and maintaining proximity with the mother, especially during the reunion episode. The infant may or may not be friendly with the stranger, but always short mo always showed more interest in interacting with the mother. Additionally, while the infant tended to be slightly distressed, the infant rarely cried. Um, Ainsworth and the colleagues interpret group B as being securely attached, showing less anxiousness and more positive attitudes toward the relationship because they believe that their mother's responsiveness was toward their needs. Taylor, how do you feel about finding out your secure attachment? Um, honestly, that was a lot of information. Okay. <laughs> um, my end, and I'm going to read a little bit, but I mean, it sounds okay. Nice. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I was trying to listen to it all, but you know. No, you're good, you're good. Let me yeah. see. We're okay. Well, Taylor, what do you wanna do? Do you wanna like we could juicy juice talk or do you think this is where we should end it like and then like do like a juicier segment on the next time? Right here. We're gonna end it here, you guys. Thank you for chiming in and listening to Thank you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I could finally um introduce Taylor to y'all. I've actually filmed a lot of videos with her. We just couldn't post it due to, you know, not wanting to expose anyone's confidentiality or the people that we were dealt uh, dealing with at the time. And now I know exactly what we need to do to be able to do that. And yeah, I guess that's really it. Like, comment, subscribe. Um, Taylor, you wanna, you change your Instagram name a lot. I was gonna say, do you wanna shout your Instagram out? Um, I'm okay this time, maybe next time. Okay, I'll catch you on. Let me see y'all, she's, she's teasing y'all. Anyway, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. But that's all for today, y'all. All right. You got to do it with the bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>